much needed break. Time is 2.28. Who have we, Council President? What's up? Who's up? Oh, we're going to do Bayfront first, and then we'll go to Matt. Uh, Denise, Denise's resolutions. Yeah, that would be a resolution that was redone that you got a, a new copy of this morning, 10 Z. So. Was 10Z42, but then I think there was a mix up somewhere. Some kind of way we got two resolutions. So, I'll tell you, if I can just pick the I'll let you get back. Z54, the law department and the BA approached me about, um, um, sh shared the some revisions that were made to it initially, and then I offered my own amendments to it as well. Um, it is not uh, Denise's version, though, so this is. Z42 is Councilperson Ridley's original resolution. Um, it, it's irre irrelevant, I guess, in the fact that Z42 is uh, Denise's, but the, the difference is, is that there's two residents on the committee of a five-member committee, and um, the, the two that um, were amended included one representative of Society Hill and, um, and then one to be appointed by the mayor and the other by the council president. In complete honesty, I did not lobby, nor did I request, to have uh, myself as an appointing body of some sort around it. And in fact, um, I mean, I'll say more about that, but I, it, this is Councilperson Ridley's resolution, so I want her to have the opportunity to speak, and then you can, we can take the conversation. So when we decided to do this resolution, what we said we would do in speaking with the law department is basically set up the committee based off of the grounds of other advisory boards. Um, so that's where the structure for this came from as far as, um, you know, who designates what. Um, right now, the board has five members, the mayor or his designee, uh, Ward A Council, Ward B Council, and two Jersey City residents. So I know people had some questions and uh, maybe some recommendations, so that's what I'd like to talk about now, those things. But I just wanted everybody to know the structure of it was based on how advisory boards are set up. And there are certain rules that we have to follow with things that, you know, the mayor can appoint. Or there are certain situations that maybe the mayor can appoint and we can um, give our consent to. But as far as most of our boards and advisory boards go, you guys know that the mayor appoints um, people to the board. So I'd just like to open it up for discussion if anyone has any issues with what is here currently. Yeah. Really Ridley and I have had conversations along with Prince Ari and the mayor as well. Um, I am not, I, I'm, I'm supportive of the idea of an advisory board on this um, redevelopment project. I just think that um, it's, given the, the, the nature of the project, how um, how much it's transformative the project is for Jersey City. I think it's kind of slightly beyond kind of just the Ward A, Ward B kind of um, um, influence, right? The, the idea and the vision that was that we had a special meeting for to discuss and then ultimately a, a very uh, prolonged um, vote and, and around it as well. And the idea of, um, you know, increasing affordable housing and, and spending upwards of $180 million in bonding for that, as we talk about, that, um, that it should be a more robust kind of uh, committee with regard to public engagement on it. I don't have specific recommendations at this time. And, and so, like I said, th that, those drafts and things that were put into that other resolution weren't from me. I didn't ask for that. I didn't ask to be, um, to appoint anyone to the committee. I didn't ask to be on the committee. Um, and Resident, More um, residential equipment, and, and Frank, like I know from conversations just that kind of Society Hill maybe having a voice there. Um, and I'll, I'll just say it pointedly, like Jersey City Together kind of drove the process of the idea of uh, um, high um, uh, increasing the affordability. And so um, I think the, 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 re the committee itself and the voices on there have to be representative of a vision for uh, an, an affordable 
community in that sense, and people who will make sure that um, as they sit at that table, I mean, the politicians will be at the table, the pol and I'm not suggesting you or anyone else, or even the mayor, or myself, or council at large, or anyone, but politicians tend to be political about their uh, decisions, and so having um, members of the community uh, whose aims are and their goals were, again, this affordability around that whole thing, um, to be a part of that uh, would be, uh, I think, uh, is, is necessary if we want to truly achieve and be true to that transformative vision of kind of a, a very inclusive of community as it pertains to kind of income and so forth around that. So um, again, I don't have specific things around that. I think my suggestion and request would be that we take a step back, kind of sit down with um, um, folks and figure out kind of what that looks like in that, in that regard. Um, I'm not looking to delay it um, for a long period of time or anything like that, but I think uh, kind of having a, a better, a, a more robust conversation again around the idea of what, what is, what do we want out of an advisory committee um, kind of moving forward and how would it advise this process? Because you're going to have a vote, Mira will have a vote as things move forward. If th things will definitely come through the redevelopment agency, if, if I should be reappointed there and Councilman Rivera, it'll go through there and council people have votes there as well and input throughout the process. Councilperson Waterman is on the planning board. Again, things will go through there. She'll have input and, and so forth. So this is like the one place, <laughs> the one place as, as it pertains at least to this particular project where the council. <laughs> I, you didn't, I didn't take a position on that either. with these two uh, residential seats what the the hope is that as you mentioned there are certain community groups that have been involved and have been advocating for those things the hope is that one of those seats or the intention is that one of those seats will go to those community groups and that the other seat will go to you know residents that live directly in that area that's being impacted um, adding to that and taking it from five to seven or something like that where we can add some more community members is um, not necessarily a bad thing. I don't really have a problem with that, adding more members. Um, and as you stated, you know, you have yourself, you have uh, Councilman Rivera, Councilwoman Waterman, who are all going to be voting on this regardless. This is an advisory board. Everything with Bayfront still has to go through planning, still has to go through zoning, still has to go through all those boards that are going to take a vote. This is strictly an advisory board. Um, so I think that's, what, five members of the council that are basically voting on Bayfront stuff before the council as a whole even votes on anything. So I think, you know, it's a lot of people. I think it's very, uh, very, I think there's a lot of input from the council as a whole and all over the city. So can I say something, mm -hmm. Dennis? Council Yeah. The first thing that I'd like to thank to Council President Dennis put you an effort to create a uh, community advisory board. That's the right direction to go, you know, because this is uh, probably, as a may we should that one of the largest project, and uh, they say $180 million bond, but probably can be more than $200 million we have to issue bond <coughs> in the future. So advisory committee, the way you said, because they have to go planning, read more agency, all different other government entity have to be passed. Yes. So advisory committee got to have to be real, true advisory committee. I don't want to make you use this committee, come up to use, excuse that advisory committee, advisory X, Y, Z, so I'm going to go that way. I don't want you to use that advisory committee as excuse. He want to do what he want to do, you know what I'm saying. So how are we going to make advisory committee independent to make real, true advice to mayor to best benefit the people of Jersey and the city futures. So when I see that they are reading, which is a great idea, is a Dennis Council president, but if we read that, this is the yeah. if we see this one, the way they write it, I don't know who wrote it, and I hope you're not idea. It's like another creative rubber spent spent committee to give the mayor. So. My intention, if we really create the advisory committee, 
let's make a real true advice to mayor. So now, if we see that the five members, I mean the chairperson designated by the mayor, and, um, and also not only a term is one year, this spread to like a probably five years things won't, it bothering me so much is that this is the one. Number five, any non-elected members for the committee shall be served at the pledge of the mayor, which means that they can be removed by the mayor with or without cause. Now, let me stop you for a second okay. and ask Corporation Council to jump in. Now, most of our boards and advisory boards are set up this way with the mayor appointing people to the boards. How much flexibility do we have around who's designating what? Well, as an advisory board, the council has a huge amount of flexibility to design the board so we how it chooses. Now, in terms of the language used in drafting this, we use the language used for other advisory boards. Yeah. Um, so if the, if the council says, no, we would rather have the council votes on appointed at-large members versus appointments from the mayor, as an advisory board. Now, this is different than other boards, which are designed by statute or a planning board or a, or a historical preservation board, which are all done by state statute and have, and have specific authority and requirements. An advisory board is created by the council yes. um, to do what the council chooses. So you really have an enormous amount of flexibility in how you choose to handle this. Okay. So we can, the council can make those designations of chairperson and other people, but we're going to have to come to a consensus out of us nine of who that one person is going to be. Right. I'll just, I'll just caution through the complications of getting it onto an agenda, getting everybody to, to, to vote and to agree. Especially we talk about choosing a chairman, but you're, you're certainly capable of doing that or, or permitted to do it. It's a matter of, you know, sometimes when it's the appointment from the mayor, but you say this is the person they put on the board, it's in terms of a bureaucratic process, it is less unwieldy. But if the council looks at it and says, we're choosing to do it this way, even though it's going to have to go on an agenda, be voted on, and be appointed in that regard, which will take longer, it's more time consuming, you're certainly welcome to do that regardless. So it's one, one method is quicker, it's more, maybe more efficient, but one method may be one you choose. So it's easy, it, it, however you want to do it is up to you. Mayor, or is the designated appointed by the, I mean, the uh, uh, chairperson shall be designated by the mayor, is to do that, and the committee members, the first initial meeting, they probably acting a chairperson. So you're saying not us vote, let the committee vote. Committee decided that should we have to done. And also, one year's term is a long-term project. One year's term, you can keep continue changing committee members without understanding the past. We're going to have a core cool problem. At least two years of term, we should do that. And uh, another one, even though they appoint a person, they have to be consent by, even the mayor appoint, have to be consent by city council. Another one, number five, the mayor can remove that without, with, without cause. Very dangerous. I think we have to delete the whole paragraph. If we may have to remove a certain ethical issue, so and so, then it should be, they come to the city council at the approved by city council to remove it. So we protect that each individual committee members of Tom, their role, so they can actually provide honest advice to mayor, even though mayor dislike or disagree, or even though mayor hates that person. So we gotta protect, so we try, this is really- The board should be created by ordinance then. Created by ordinance? Then what are we to do that? So the, then created by ordinance, protect them to make advice to the mayor real True advice, you know what I'm saying. Other than that, why would it? Yeah, why would we switch to ordinance? Because the ordinance has the force of law. Many of the many of the boards are the super boards are created by state statutes. The other boards that we have in the city are created by local ordinance. So, so, well, well, so in that respect, like the Immigrant Affairs Commission is uh, created by ordinance, and it's all all. Volunteer, with the exception of myself, and non-elected officials, and even my seat could have gone to a non-elected official um, at the time. It was actually the mayor's idea to have me on there to maintain some continuity on that, that whole thing. But that, that being said, uh, put aside that, um, yes, yeah, so all it could be an all-resident board or, or non-resident, too. It doesn't have to be residents, necessarily. And also, two residents, if you see the file, one is the mayor's, mm -hmm. and the two council person, and uh, 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 what are they called? Uh, five. Then, resident two. 
if the three elect officers withdraw, I hate to say that team of may here, the two residents, even though they have a <clears throat> major different feedback by their own community, three politicians can be decided all as a majority. So they should have at least four resident boys and okay. three by one is for the mayor, two by council, A and B. I got no problem with that, you know? I hope not, it's our ward, so. <laughs> <laughs> and the, really, the council president did great and he did great. We should be do that, some kind of community input. This is uh, probably the last 100 acre land for the future of Georgia City. We should be do right. Okay, so let me go back through basically what we discussed. Um, the committee themselves should vote on the chairperson once they vote, once, once they get in, yeah. which I'm okay with. Mm -hmm. If we, we can make those revisions, I'm fine with that. Two year term, I'm fine with that. Um, have the council consent on the community members, like the mayor picked, but the council gives their consent. Yes. You know. Okay, and we'd like to increase that to four. Right. Okay. So all four people would be appointed by the mayor with the consent. With of the, the consent right. of the council. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we can amend, like I said, I feel like though those are all good ideas. But I would not want to rush into a final vote on this and just take the time to kind of pause. The other thing I would. Then we would have to change it all together. Yeah. yeah. And then, so we, we still have a little time if it has to be done by work. Yeah. So that's an empty voice, council president, you're right. And also, we have to put in that whatever their committee meeting, there somebody have to keep the minutes. Their minutes have to be they're open to public. So we all know that what I did, Scott, what I did decide. You know, yes. so we got to have to be transparent. I don't want to. Yeah. Should we spell that out for this? Because, for mm -hmm. example, the Immigrant Affairs Commission, according to our our attorney who helps us with that, John McKinney, is he here? Um, that we, we aren't required to comply with the Oprah and things like that. Like, even though we're not required to, we should put an ordinance because I think it's, in order to give the public confidence that the, that the transparency is there with the $180 million, again, and, yes. and the development of the project in that sense, putting as much transparency um, out there um, throughout the process and from the very start in terms of establishing it. The other thing I would suggest if we're kind of trying to craft an ordinance around that is something, and I can't take credit for it, I don't know who's talked about it, but I mean, we do now take applications for people to apply. Um, they go to the clerk, um, but the reality, to different boards and commissions if people want to apply. But, but it's not, I don't know that it's required or mandated to, to do that, right? So I don't know that everyone who gets appointed to a board actually sub submits an application to the clerk. I would say, it, in this particular instance, and maybe for everything at some point, um, but in this particular instance, that kind of a required application around that so that people can see what people's credentials are and background, and, and even if they provided a statement or something, because for me, again, that vision of the affordable housing vision around that, that knowing if that person who's, who's considering, who wants to be appointed to the board, that they actually prescribe to a vision of affordable housing around that. Um, rather than me kind of just guessing at it, whether or not um, or, or doing some, some detective work and trying to figure out if this person's secretly with uh, developers or something like that and trying to like enrich others or in the process. Um, and, and so putting that out there in a very transparent, transparent way where they have to apply and it's public information as to who's applied and who's, who's, who wants to be on the board and then ultimately if the mayor's making a recommendation, um, it's all very transparent and people will know and frankly it'll, it'll hold the, the administration feet to the fire because the public will know who he's, who's applied and who, who he's not yep. recommending for appointment as well as who he is mm -hmm. and then um, and then it holds us as council people accountable as well and I think this kind of project again deserves that kind of level of accountability around all of that. And the comfort you we don't want anybody to jail because of this big project in the future. <laughs> so I just want to make sure, just make sure, but also, Council President, if we put in the one of the paragraph, if we come at advisor uh, committee, ask a certain documentation information, other different department, we should put in that they, they must have to cooperate with that uh, advisor committee. So like a JCRA, the advisor committee looking for certain uh, uh, selection of that uh, uh, developer, then JHRA provide 
all, all those information otherwise the committee. So they all know it's cross check. You know what I'm saying? Well, they're going to have to provide us with that information anyway, right? That would come from the council who these developers are. Say that again. Like if they're, if they're choosing a developer, that would come through, through the council anyway, no. right? No. JCRA decides. No. So. Well, <coughs> but I mean, yeah, JCRA. They would decide, but we would have that ability to question their decision or not. Well, before they make a decision, well, otherwise the committee they actually. Question, so yeah, they can question. They the you guys are gonna be have a plan to pick up the designated uh, developer. Yeah. We like to have well, what kind of qualification required, what mm -hmm. kind of plans do they have, so and so. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, definitely it should be. So because that's why we like to print their word to protect instead of the, you raise your hand after boss is left, you know what I'm saying? So you're People saying just, just spell it out to make sure they're going to the advisory committee with that information. Yeah. Okay. So transparency, we don't want just scandal come out Jersey three years later, XYZ and go jail because of that some on the table deal with and the pay front to you know what I'm saying? we don't want to do that. We try to make a council present. And the thank you for Dennis, mm -hmm. bring up the transparency of this city to help everybody in Georgia City. Okay? Now, question. If we, since, if we have to do this as an ordinance, can we put the ordinance on this agenda or do we have to wait now until the next council meeting? I would think the meeting this morning is pretty. If it's with the consent of the council, we'd be able to walk it on. I would I'll leave it to the council president. Uh, because we have already had the resolution, you're discussing it now, and you're giving me the feedback you're looking for. Yeah. That we need to be in ordinance, I suppose we could walk it on for, for Wednesday, as long as the, the council is okay with that. I would like to do that if we can, if everybody's okay with that. If we go back and we really, yes, you know, I'm okay. Updates, I would like to walk it on. It's such a great idea. One of the recommendations I would have is, if we've got to talk about these, it would be available for the public review, to make sure there is a reporting secretary is pointed as part of uh, as part of the ordinance. That can either come from the body, from the folks who are appointed or can be appointed separately as a non-voting member. And I, so I, I can leave up to the council how you'd like to handle that. But I do think it's very important to have someone there who the council and the mayor have confidence will take the appropriate notes to make sure that when they're made publicly available, it accurately reflects what went on in the meeting. Councilwoman, as you, as you are the one who is uh, putting this one forward, I'll, I'll make the changes and I'll work with you to make sure they're satisfactory and then we'll get to all the members of the council. All right. Thank you. Thank you, So does that mean both resolutions be withdrawn? Yes. What? Yeah, because yeah. We, got, we have to make an ordinance. I'm not, I'm not positive to be in the ordinance. I can review that with you. We can okay. leave it on. Okay. If you'd like to, leave it on as the resolution now. I'll find out it would need to be in a lot, a lot of the, actually, a lot of the advisory committees so, so, we have are done by executive order. So I'm not certain he's being ordinance, but it may be. So if okay. you give me that flexibility, that would be good. So I, I would say if it's an ordinance, it's fine with me. Because it's first reading and then there's a second reading. Yeah. If it's a resolution, um, that, that's challenging because I mean, between now and Wednesday, uh, by the time you finish the resolution, which is probably tomorrow, right? Then we have to review it and figure out whether that's like Okay. Touching on all the points, and I don't know that that's enough time for. Okay. What we can do is this: if it's on for ordinance. We can do it for first reading Wednesday. If it's going, if it's going to be just a resolution, then we'll have it on for the next meeting. So the, if that be, if that be agreeable well, to the members of the yeah. council. Let's find out whether it, yeah, I'll, it needs to be I'll, either or first, so and then we'll take it from there. Council president. Yeah. Yeah. The same function yeah. because at the same time, regardless yeah. whether it was a resolution or an ordinance. This resolution which go because as I say, the, the way they draft is a mayor have a right. To Kick their committee members. Well, he's saying he doesn't want to withdraw it and then put it back. Since it's already here, leave it. If it doesn't need to be an ordinance, then why don't you want to the withdraw? So we study with the other Yes, that's the way we have to do. And, and that's fine. If you want to withdraw it, we'll yeah, withdraw it. As long as the council's okay with speak adding it. Speak to council person Ridley. As long as the council's okay with adding it last minute on Wednesday as an ordinance, that's fine. Let's leave it as it is. We'll figure out whether it needs to be an ordinance or a resolution and we'll take it from there when we're making the update. Before Wednesday, right? Yeah, well, we can always okay, withdraw yeah. it. Doesn't right. We can withdraw it all right. Wednesday if we need to. Yeah, okay. I got no problem. Okay. All right. Okay, moving on to the next item. Uh, Matt, we have Matt and Lindsay here. And uh, they've got um, an ordinance and two resolutions. The first, the ordinance is 3C. You want to start there? Sure. Um, 
It's an ordinance of the Municipal Council of the City of Jersey City adopting amendments to the right to request a pre-application conference of the Jersey City Land Development Ordinance, uh, 18095. Uh, so this is a continuation of some of uh, other ordinances the Council has seen regarding uh, permit processors and, and greater um, attention given to the definitions of different uh, design professionals and other other professionals that are involved in developments. Uh, so this is in chapter 345. We're adding a paragraph to 15, uh, subsection G, and it just outlines a, that attendees at a pre-application conference shall complete attendance forms, and, um, and we'll, we'll provide those forms and make that, that standard policy going forward for uh, city planning. Um, this was a, this was added as an effort to um, add language that addresses the permit processors um, that has been done in other ordinances earlier this summer. Uh, before they go to. Uh, before they file or, or seek to go to a planning board meeting. Okay, and it's at a formal meeting with the request with you? Or with the yeah, they, they asked to discuss the, the application with staff. And this ordinance just simply adds to the requirement that there is basically a certain set of people that are allowed to be there in a form that has to be filled out? That's right. So it would create a record of that, that meeting. It, it goes back to the meetings ago going to the, making sure it was clear who's involved in these processes and who's been involved in these applications and who's present at these meetings. So really it's really making sure as, as the purpose of the expediter meet ordinance was to make sure there's clarity as to who actually is involved in these projects. Okay. Any other questions, comments on this? Hearing none, uh, we've got two resolutions. 10Y and 10Z. Uh, I'm going to start with 10Z. Uh, so uh, this is a resolution to of the municipal council asking for the planning board to conduct an investigation to study, report, uh, and propose an inclusionary 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 housing ordinance um, per the MLUL. Uh, so uh, this is just a resolution stating that you guys are authorizing us to prepare a report and we and we'll we'll attempt to get it back to you within uh the set time frame in the mlul which is 35 days so just so what does that report consist of so what will you give to the planning board i guess for that to vote on and then come back to us so uh we are looking into that um i don't think that there's any i, I don't think that there's any uh Yet strategy on how, what that report's going to look like, but we're, we're trying to conduct research. Okay. It might, we might come back to you and say 35 days is not enough. We need to schedule meetings. This one's going to be a multi-month long process. Uh, we'll, we'll have to convene maybe a stakeholder group. I don't, so I don't think there's anything off the table at this point. Um, is so. It, is it a requirement that this go before the planning board before potentially we as a council vote on an inclusionary zoning ordinance? If it, if it is amending, so what, what landed on my desk was uh, an ordinance that looked much like the Newark's inclusionary zoning ordinance, which was an update to their uh, equivalent of the land development ordinance. Right. Any amendment to the land development ordinance, okay. uh, the official process laid out in the MLUL, okay. it starts with this. Okay. Okay. With a resolution from the Municipal Council yeah. asking for uh, the recommendation up or down, left or right, from Planning Board. Okay. <laughs> I still want to tell you about it. Yeah, good. We're at 10C. We're at 10C. Pass our MC first. Yeah. Oh, we, we didn't do 10 Oh, no, I, I skipped to say. Yeah. I mean, I, I was speaking for myself, but okay. I imagine there's probably some agreement is that yeah. I think there's an urgency to move this forward. 
um, and at least from the council process, it's been a little bit of a black box as to who's doing what and how and who's in charge of what's going on. And so I think the thing, I, you know, I'm very supportive of this. The, the worry and concern that I would have would be if we push this forward, and then all of a sudden we say, well, now we need to build and have a committee meet and, you know, do another six months of meetings. I mean, that, we obviously want a good bill that's thought through, but, you know, my understanding is we've been working on this for months as a yeah. city. So 35 days feels like a, a good amount of time. I mean, obviously, you guys have your process, and we want to be reasonable, but just, I guess, my message is let's try to move this as quickly as possible. Yeah, so my, the, the first, I think the first uh, tack that city plan, planning will take is looking at who's designated as the administrator of this type of policy. Right now, the version that city planning has received is the tax abatement and compliance office. Um, so my first stop would be with them to see do they have the capacity, what, what have they set up in place to actually carry this out, um, is that the right place to put it, and if I can do all of that and fix the holes that city planning sees uh, in 35 days, then uh, then uh, I might play some numbers, but <laughs> but we'll try. I'm sure you have a lot of allies. Like, if we need to bring in stakeholders, if we need to set up set up meetings, we want to. Yeah. We want to really push that. I know. I I, I will. My, my first attempt at looking at a good ordinance for this is figuring out if we can implement it and implement it correctly, otherwise it's just words on a page. So sure. that's that's where we're starting. Sure. So I just want to get this on the record as well. So, um, <coughs> going back to last year, and for the law department as well, going back to last year, had submitted kind of drafts of an inclusionary zoning ordinance that, fair sh that an organization called Fair Share Housing helped draft, um, submitted to the law department. None of that has seen kind of like the, the light of day in terms of trying to get it into an actual ordinance presented to the, the city council. And, and nothing was mentioned at the time about going to planning, certainly, um, since then. Well, but let, let me just yeah. say, say my piece here. So um, granted, some of that got, got held up. And, and I say held up. It, it got um, sidelined, sidetracked because of elections and things like that that um, kind of took things off the table and, and didn't move along. But, but since then, and since early this year, uh, myself, Councilperson Waterman in particular, have had conversation with the mayor in terms of trying to get a draft and then working with the law department or talking to the law department about getting some of these drafts. So I have yet to see a draft and I've, I've repeatedly requested the, the draft that was knowing that the law department was working on it, knowing that we'd submitted language for an ordinance itself to serve as a start and, um, and yet, to see, yet to see a draft yet. So um, this is where, and I'm sorry that Peter's out, um, and I want this on the record because when we talked about kind of the appointment of the Corporation Council around this. Like, so, you know, the mayor may have his own vision of what, what does inclusionary zoning looks like in that regard. Um, and that may be counter to where some of the council is on this um, as well. Or maybe it's, maybe it's the same. I don't know exactly because I haven't actually seen a draft, right? So um, that being said, um, you know, the, I've, I've asked repeatedly for it and haven't seen it yet. Um, and I've been told it's coming, it's coming, and then finally told just l last week that um, had to go through planning, and then uh, and that planning where folks were going to begin working on this and go through that, that process, which I completely understand and it made sense to me, um, knowing what we've done in the past around these things. At the same time, um, um, I still haven't seen the draft, <laughs> and uh, um, and so that being said, the only reason I want to see the draft as well is to, as I suggested, was to loop in some of the affordable housing advocates who've worked on this in other municipalities, including Newark, including Hoboken, including other communities, and loop them into the process to be able to work with planning or law or both to be able to kind of get this going. And then I've got, and then there's folks from Jersey City's community who, are, who have their own expertise and knowledge about this stuff that would like to share their thoughts um, throughout the process. And so, um, it would be helpful to be able to get some sense of like where where folks public input can get in here at this process and um, and again just kind of getting if, if you're scrapping the draft at the law department to know that and that you're starting from scratch to know if that's the case as well that's those are my two things where's the public input and are we scrapping the drafts or whatever has been done and starting anew if an ordinance comes before council probably it'll be an amended version of what's already being been 
drafted. Um, if the if in 35 days the council is in receipt of a memo saying more time is needed and public input is required and we're going to be sourcing advice from different agencies, local, uh, state, um, community groups, and other stakeholders, and that's that might be the case. Uh, yeah, I just I don't know enough at this point to say. Are you starting from scratch? We, we're working on both routes right now. We're looking at where we feel as though amendments should, should be put in to the current draft and looking at other ordinances like statewide. As the Corporation Council, we work for everyone, the council members, the administration. If a council member came to me and said, I'd like to work on a draft of something with you, and you work on it, and the council person says, well, I'm not really ready to show it to anybody yet, I want to keep working on it, and then you let me know when you're ready to show it to other people, that's what I will do. I think the same goes for the administration. The administration says, we're working on a draft, we want to get through it, we're not ready to share it yet, so we're still going through internal process to figure out what it looks like. But I made a request for a draft, like long before the administration made a request for a draft, frankly. Okay. And I'm still waiting on a draft, like it's not... Uh, it's a well, little frustrating here. Well, well look, looking for your own. This, this is looking right for your, my point about okay. when we first appointed the corporation council. There's going to be times when we're at odds on things, and so you got to choose. Like you can't serve two masters in that sense, right? So well, I suggested at that we're time. To, and that's, my, that's my. We're obligated to. Well, the council president's point. I mean, I know this. He's been working on this for what you know years before the administration decided to put a draft in on this bill. And so why is the administration's bill being privileged over his? And it's, it's, but it is, it's, well, no, but it is by plain fact. Okay, well, in my four months here, I was not aware that you specifically wanted, we're always willing to work with any individual council member who wants to work with any project at all. Okay, if we want to, want to decide something different to work on one just for you, and then for members of the council, that's fine. But it's important for me as, as one of the leaders of the law department, to make sure that we're not saying working with one person and then saying that, that draft is not ready to be seen for any of the council members or any of the administration, then gets sent out to someone else. It's, it's not everyone has a right to get to a finished product with the lawyer they're working with before it gets shown to someone else. Let's um, just go back on one thing too. Uh, this language doesn't necessarily have to go in Chapter Three, Four, Five because it is draft, the draft that we've received, that's where it places it. That's why this resolution's before you. That's the process laid out in the MLUL to update this chapter. He's not the only one. I have a several experience that how frustrating I am with that issue. And the problem is everyone is the same. If the law department, actually council has a certain draft ordinance, if law department not response in certain period of time, then we as a city council go out, hire outsourcing the, the corporation of the council to do their job. You, you, the council does not have the authority to hire lawyers over the objection of the administration. So then what we have to do, if the corporation council responds that certain period of time, what well, we have to give to them some kind of penalty, here you go, give it the ticket. The council's remedy for whatever displeasure they have with you, how the corporation council's office has responded to them, is not to hire your own attorney. Is there, is there, a, is there a specific issue? Because I, I have not seen a draft of this ordinance. Which ordinance? I'm this sorry. inclusionary zoning thing. Okay. Since it's been requested for months, like to, to do this, and and then as of like a week and two weeks ago, was pressing on like where's the draft? Like it's it's being tweeted out into the world, like that it's coming coming to the council. I'm like, I haven't seen the draft yet, and I. I requested it. I requested that something be, be drafted up. I'm not trying to take credit. I just wanted to, like, I've got people literally asking me, like, what, what's in it, and I can't tell them, like, what's going on. It's, it's frustrating. So I'm just saying, give me the draft. If not, I'm just going to take the draft that I, that I submitted over a year ago, and um, I'll hold public hearings then and just ask people to come in and give me their thoughts, and then we'll put up counter counter legislation. Like that's, if that's the way it's got to go, then that's I'm trying to work cooperatively on this stuff and it's like uh, frustrating. Not, not you, I know you're. I didn't 
Right, you heard that, right? Remains on the table. Yeah. Will we get the draft? Yes. We'll, yes. Thank you. Okay, that's it. Good. Uh, we have one. I have one more, and I want to introduce. Uh, it's ten Y, uh, eighteen seven three nine. Uh, ten Y. Ten Y. Resolution ten Y. Uh, and I'm. Uh, this is a new staff planner. She's an environmental planner. It's Lizzie Sigmund. Hello. Um, I've been uh, working with her to uh, Lindsay Sigmund, S I G M U N D. So, yeah, uh, this resolution would authorize city planning to conduct a study, uh, preliminary investigation of conditions of the Bergen Avenue 1 study area for determination as an area in need of redevelopment or rehabilitation. This study area is comprised of Block 22405, Lot 3, which is in the R1 zone. It is currently vacant and landlocked. It's worth mentioning that Lots 1, 2, and 3 share common ownership. Lot 2 is the study area. Lot 3 lies in the Green Villa redevelopment area. So the intention would be to eventually include that if it meets the criteria in the Green Villa redevelopment area. So how much size of a lot two? I'm sorry? Size of a lot two. How, how big is it all? I don't know if we have that information on hand. Um, it though, although it does look like it's about 50 by 75. Is this the regularly lot? Regularly shaped. Is this the lot where they're proposed to develop in the stone? Yeah. Yeah? They, I believe that the, the owner, they, have drafted plans on lot three um, <coughs> per, per the redevelopment plan. Uh, and because lot two is landlocked, uh, it, it, it only fronts on the light rail tracks um, that they incorporated that in their proposal. Uh, but because it's R1, um, it, it makes the it makes a, an application of that a little more difficult, a little more uh, because it would be split zoned. Uh, so this other avenue is is suggested, and we're seeking authorization from council to study it. But the, it's not the only remedy; they can still make an application. It's another vacant lot next to it, closer to Morton Place. Is that this is the same one we're talking about, right? So this is an L-shaped lot that you're saying? No, uh, this is uh, lot three two two four zero three is uh, currently an auto body shop. I believe it's called Carlitos Auto. It's on Bergen Avenue uh, at the T intersections of Eagie and Kearney. Then that might be confusing. Correct. Uh, okay. Yeah. So lot two is already in, in, included. And they're proposed. Okay. All right. All right. So I mean, just trying to make sure where we are. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They own lot one, but it's not included in the proposed project. It's just lots two and three. Yep. They're looking to continue their auto in business on lot one. Resolution 10Z4, awarding a contract to Park Mobile to provide cell phone based parking payment system at no cost to the city of Jersey City. We have uh, a presentation from the vendor uh, about this service. I'll hand it off to you guys. Go ahead. Thank you very much. 10Z4. Uh, Henry Spelli is our procurement specialist, and uh, Dave Holler is our VP for sales and on demand. Uh, I got about 40 slides, but I'll go through quickly. Okay. Only three, man. I got 10, uh, <laughs> including the title page. Okay. <laughs> okay. Back up. Uh, 
Park Mobile is the leader in uh, on-demand um, uh, payments by, uh, by your cell phone or your app. We've got 10 point uh, a million registered users currently, uh, five plus um, monthly uh, uh, transactions, 240,000 uh, users added monthly. We've got 1.4 million parking spaces, uh, 350 plus exclusive uh, municipalities, 39 of the top 100 cities, uh, 120 plus universities, and we're in about 20 plus airports. Um, Park Mobile, we deliver the most innovative, uh, efficient, and feature rich auto related smart mobility platform in the industry. Uh, you know, uh, you could see uh, on that, let me see if I can clear that up. There you go. Uh, we have uh, our zone auto sensing and auto fill. Uh, simplifies you know, the experience that a you know commuter would have, reduces incorrect uh, entries. Uh, we have real-time on-street parking availability. Uh, helps drivers who are circling around looking for a parking space. Uh, we have unique map view for location finding. Uh, we have barcode readers. Uh, you can uh, view Park Mobile enabled spaces in garages on your app. You can make a reservation for a. Uh, uh, parking space as well. And uh, you can also view uh, local attractions, retail, uh, restaurants, lodging and transit uh, that's located nearby. Uh, we work with a lot of our communities and have special events that we put uh, you know, that special event on the, uh, on the app. It's like I was saying, it's a very easy enhancing transparency and removes a lot of the friction. What you would do is you would register, you would set up an account with your, uh, your uh, credit card number. Also, you could put up to five license plates. So, you know, you could have five cars that would be on it. Uh, you would pull into a space, uh, you would choose the parking time, how many minutes. You go by your business rules. So if you have a, only a two hour limitation, that's what it would be. Um, you would then uh, start the, the transaction. The zone number would be at the top there. Here it's 222. Uh, it would come up, uh, your, your car would come up with the license plate number. Uh, you put it for duration of 30 minutes and uh, you would wind up having a countdown and with, uh, within 15 minutes when it expires, you would get a text message saying that your parking is about to expire. And you either wind up, uh, you know, if the business rules again allow for it, you could re up uh, that time. Uh, when you look at, uh, we have the largest network of municipal, private, airport, transit, and venue parking inventory in the country. Uh, we're in New York City, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Denver, Pittsburgh, Newark, Atlanta, Dallas, Texas, Houston, Texas, Miami Beach, Florida. Phoenix, Arizona, New Orleans, Louisiana, and San Diego, California. Over 28% of our Park, uh, Park Mobile members use Park Mobile across different travel markets. So if you were to go into New York City, you could also use Park Mobile in New York City, Philadelphia, and in the 20 plus municipalities we have in New Jersey. Total users in the I-95 corridor from Washington, D.C. to Boston are about 3.5 million users. Uh, total users from I-95 corridor from New York City to Boston are about 1.5 million users. Uh, and we have a, about a 15% greater adoption rate in those, uh, those markets. These are the New Jersey deployments. Uh, we've worked on this for over the last five years. We're in Bloomfield, Trenton, Ridgewood, Bridgewater, Summit, Union City, West New York, Wildwood, Wildwood Crest, Rosemount, Hoboken, next door, Chatham, Englewood, Fairlawn, Glen Rock, Patuxent, Montclair, New Brunswick, Cape May, New Jersey Transit, and Roselle, Ocean City, Princeton Junction, West Windsor, Lambertville, and York. Again, the customer experience is, you know, first an awareness to make sure we have signage up, street teams, local media, wallet cards, uh, adoption, we welcome email and demos and app messaging, the engagement, geofencing, event notifications, push triggers, face, Facebook ads, 
we basically have the, uh, the most number of uh, uh, alerts that go out compared to our other uh, two competitors. Uh, we have a loyalty program that, uh, and re-engagement. Uh, we send out news and updates. Uh, if someone doesn't use it in, say, uh, maybe a month, we'll send out an email alert to them and say, gee, where have you been? You know, I haven't used it in a while. Uh, and uh, as far as advocacy goes, uh, there's app store uh, reviews, social media, and uh, refer a friend. We've updated the signage uh, for the look and feel. Uh, this is what would be placed in the, uh, in the throughout the town. Uh, we have the Jersey City, City of Jersey City logo in one of those bottom corner rights. Uh, and uh, you know we would work uh, on the implementation and the rollout with uh, with uh, you know the DPW or whoever is responsible for signage in your uh, in your town. Uh, this is what it would look like. Uh, there's a green sticker that's placed on the meter or on the, uh, the uh, kiosk uh, that you have. Uh, and uh, we integrate with a lot of those uh, already in existence, uh, those kiosks. And uh, that's it. And council people, any questions for our guests? Say through the app, is there any type of is there an interface to pay with a physical credit card on the meter and all? So we, we don't provide any of the meter hardware. It's strictly another payment method, so it can be on top of coin operated meters like you have, but we can work with the kiosks or credit card meters as well. But we don't provide any of that hardware. Okay. Just the app. There's also a there's a second uh, piece of hardware that we'd have to invest in, which was approved in the capital budget, which is license plate reading technology. So we think about enforcement of uh, parking, both in the lots and for the meters. Uh, the best, the most efficient way to do it is with license plate readers uh, on our parking enforcement vehicles, uh, and the app, of course, su submits that uh, information to whatever technology that we would get. And we've already talked about uh, which technologies are compatible, and it seems like anything we'd be interested in is, so this makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. We got it for this one. Right? I met with them. They're they're on board. We've uh, we've sort of discussed with a few groups uh, on the west side and in the Heights and and, and a few others uh, to see what people think. Everyone seems excited about this. For us, it's a win. We stand to make more revenue without really doing much different to the way we operate. It's going to make things a little more efficient. Um, and and also we like the idea of expanding into uh, handling. Uh, the zone permits and the lot permits. It, that will make things so much simpler to buy and renew your, your permits on your phone in an app instead of having to go to fill out a form and stick a thing in the window and that sort of stuff. So how much is the cost of the new? It costs us zero dollars. Uh, there's a transaction fee when you pay on the meter. It's, it, I forget what the fee was. It was 35 cents, yeah. Um, and so what? We, we've heard that in Hoboken, the, the same thing, for example, the, just from this implementation of the app alone, uh, payments went up 20% just because it's easier. It was 20% or so? Uh, just because it's easier to pay on the app, uh, and it's a much more seamless user experience. Very good. You know, we've got no much complaint, but the city of Jersey doesn't need to invest the money for the Head, yeah, oh, well, yeah. We, I mean, we could if you want us to, but we're not going to pay. It's just a label, you stick it on the That's the label. Yeah. yeah. So you can, still, you can still pay with coins if you want yeah, to, you want to or yeah. you can use the app. We have to be, because we have a lot of senior population in Jersey. Yes. Yeah. So we have to make sure that. It's just an additional way to pay. If you don't want to pay 35 cents, and you make the convenience of it, and you can pay with this, but you have to change your credit card, and you can pay up either way. But if you choose this, I mean, the advantage is really you get that notice when you're, when you're up for expiration. Mm -hmm. And then automatically, no matter where you are, in a meeting, a lot, in a restaurant, what have you, you, know, you pay, key it and it just pays for another hour if allowed by your business rules or not. But you can have variable pricing for meters at different locations with this. There's a lot of ways you can tweak this information to make money for the town. Because you're going to get a great data system. You're going to get a lot of information on what meters are, 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 are the most are your best, are the most highly utilized, you know, who's the best and who's the last. 
and you could make to make a lot of decisions on things based on the data. Right now you don't have any data on your position. And you don't have to worry about a lot of quarters. Just cut down the the problem with you know the physical quarters to be transported, all the security issues, things of that nature. So uh, it will save some manpower in part two. So can I ask one more thing? Can we like a holiday? A holiday, religious holiday, any holiday, or a national holiday. So that doesn't require to deposit money in the parking meter. Do they have a sign show for free parking? In, in app, you'll tell us the rules for your zone and rate structure. So it could be you don't accept payment on Sundays, you don't accept payment on holidays. We'll get that whole zone and rate structure. So if you have, if you're trying to pay in the app, if you're putting coins in the meter, th those meters will still accept the coins. But our app, if you want that messaging to be payment not accepted at this time, we can do that. Yep. Are it accessible for this, or do we have to upgrade? Because I know I use. Yeah, we just yeah, so we can we can keep the same meters that are coin operated and they still work. We just we're putting a sticker on the meter that allows you to also pay with an app if you want. So both will work. So no changes to our infrastructure unless we want to down the road change our meter heads to something else. Like Kenny said, Washington D.C. such high utilization in this one area, like ninety-five percent adoption rate. Yeah. But they're taking the meters out of that area. You're deploying them in another part of the city, and you're only allowed to park yes. by using the app. They seek to release the other hours. Very long area. There they were. Park mobile sites, there's no park for no meters. Mm -hmm. That's an area they set aside because the utilization factor is so high. Why spend money on a meter if you don't need it? You know, you can get to the point where you buy less meters. You're actually cutting the capital budget somewhere. Right, we have a redivision just the meter, or we also envision we are. I mean, it's, it's, we're probably going to phase it in. It's probably too much to do it all at once. We'll, we'll start with the meters and then move into the permits. That's in the contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do you guys handle customer service issues? Somebody says, oh, I don't have the meter. Or I didn't pay and I got a ticket from the parking authority. We have, um, we have a lot of ways for users to reach out. It could be in app. You can go to help. You can dial the 800 number and get somebody live in Atlanta where headquarters is. Um, we also monitor social media, so Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, because inevitably somebody's on their phone using an app. If they right. complain, they might not call us or you. They may just go sure. and complain about it on Twitter. So we have people in the office monitoring social media to look for complaints. Email, you can send us an email. Um, but you, you will get calls about citations. You would have access to um, our reporting database to be able to look in and see if somebody paid during that, during that time period. So, so you guys, you would, so, so the user would speak to Park Mobile, potentially, they could always just call the city. Yep. Speak to Park Mobile first, and I guess you would generate a report and send it to our parking authority? Is yeah, if it's uh, something where a ticket was issued in there, they'd have to contact you to have that um, cleared up. But if it's a if it's a usability issue or a problem with the, with the app, they would contact us. But if it's something about it, we wouldn't obviously have the right to um, you know, get involved in, a, in an appeal, sure. so we, we direct them to uh, to contact you. But we provide that backup to them of, hey, you did pay for the session, you'd have access to that as well. How is a broken meter? I'm sorry? How is a broken meter? Somebody comes up on a broken meter, I'm not going to pay for the, it was broken, I don't need to pay anything, and like, because that's what people do. <laughs> it's a, Right? And yeah, I mean, it, it, again, if, um, if you, you've got all those park mobile stickers, our, our, um, our goal is to increase the adoption. So somebody may not even be looking at that meter to see if it works or not. They're just paying through the app. So um, you're still going to have people who look for those broken meters to park at. But, um, the meter is broken. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> because it pushes them toward using the park mobile. Or park mobile app. And less, less, less of a capital expenditure. I mean, you don't have to invest it right away. It's still used. It's sort of a fallback if you will. Yeah. I think that they over there. Um, so if somebody doesn't use it, they decide not to use it. Yeah. And they just park in a broken meter spot. Like, what, yeah. what happens at that point? Like, uh, hopefully, we never have that situation with a broken meter, but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, something. It never happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Everything is always working. And you just put your, uh, your license plate. Into the app and yeah, yeah. You set up your account, yeah. you know, then you put in the uh, the license plate number. You put up to five, five different cars, right? And then uh, you know, once you do that, you're good to go. And you know, you can see the uh, the zone number there, like five one zero seven. 
Okay, that's when you enter the zone number and then you enter the times. So it's pretty simple. And Brian, from the administration's perspective, why, why do you take part of the versus? Uh, we did a research there. There are not a ton of vendors out there. Uh, one of the main, well, they have all the functionality we want. That was one piece of it. Uh, and it seems to seamlessly integrate with our old hardware technology and the new. But also, uh, they are all over the place. So, you know, we anticipate a high adoption with visitors to Jersey City, and it's just easier to have one app and just go to all those cities and, and, and pay like that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you oh yeah, I've tested it. I've gone to a bunch of cities. Yeah, yeah. Have we made any progress on the hiring sort of an analyst type role in the parking authority? Because my worry with Mary is that, you know, she's expanding enforcement. She's got 20, you know, 24 6 or whatever, 24 7. And then, you know, I'm sure there'll be some integration issues with rolling this out. So, have we, where are we in that potential process? We are, uh, we've made some progress on, on additional capacity at parking uh, enforcement. Um, Mark Bunner is on his way up, can yeah. confirm exactly who that person is going to be, but uh, it's more of a management kind of role that we're, we're looking at to help coordinate all of the uh, bodies over there sort of thing. So, Crystal? Yeah, I don't know if that's confirmed yet, actually. Uh, that, that was a name circling around. I, I didn't want to say it if it wasn't. Uh, but the other, the other thing I want to mention about parking enforcement with this is that they can uh, do the enforcement on their phone. They get notifications of all the meters that are expired. It's on the phone, which is great because uh, our enforcement agents already have phones on them to deal with Watts complaints, C-Click Fix complaints. Um, they have a, a body camera technology in an app on the phone. So they are very quickly becoming this mobile phone-based uh, uh, office, which is, which is fantastic. Things are getting much more efficient over there. Sometimes it's going to actually feel parking <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, that's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> you can turn on and off those notifications as well. So you can send a text yeah. message. Yeah. For instance, it's like, oh, you're popping your yeah, okay. 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 And we all. You didn't get a ticket, right? No. Right. <laughs> but it's a good system. Yeah. Any other questions, Council? Comments? Nope. Great. Mark's thank, walking thank out. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Before we. Um, Mark, Mark is on his way up for one of the items. Actually, there was a reason why I had um, Matt and them come late. Is, um, or one of them here late was uh, last was uh, the two second reading ordinances. Um, so 4I and 4J, these are the amendments to Enos Jones and uh, Berry Lane Park, I'm sorry, Morris Canal. So I had requested the, the valuations of the, uh, um, I, I, during the meeting I texted um, Mike Hanley, NW Financial, and it did, it did get sent out on Sunday for Enos Jones, but it's not completed for Morris Canal. You said, I didn't see it. Um, he just sent it to me today, but it was sent to somebody on Sunday. I don't know who it was sent. I think it was sent to Matt, actually. Okay. Okay. So, um, so I have not seen it yet. I just just got it on my phone today, and um, so I, I will forward it to you as well as the rest of the council. But um, my, my request is because um, Morris Canal is not done, is that um, we, we table these till um, the September meeting. I, I'd like to review the two valuations, and I for myself, looking at Morris Canal with kind of where its economics are as a market and so forth, and looking at Enos Jones and looking where it is as a market and kind of seeing the valuation of that and what we're getting back as community benefits um, is could be informative as to kind of what's, what makes for um, the sort of up zoning and so forth around all this stuff, right? So in, in making determinations as to whether we're getting appropriate community benefits in return. Um, and I thought it provides a good contrast in that sense to be able to, or comparison, rather, I should say, to, to kind of look at the two. So, and that's just a Do you want to hold the vote here? So my, I, I mean, yeah. I don't know if we, you know, if we have, we, the Enos joke was that it's my side is a long ongoing conversation. So there's some incentive to move it forward. And, I know the developers are here, I don't know what their timelines are. 
Um, but I just, from a, just a planning perspective, I love doing evaluations. But we sent these to them, Mike, a month ago. I mean, so yeah. I, I just think it's like a, if we're going if we're gonna rely on these as something that we're doing and making important decisions based on them, you know, there has to be some form of a timeline with his work. And if he's not able to deliver in the time that we ask him to, we shouldn't use them. And that, I mean, look, this has been, this is, this is in the two weeks. We've had over a month. July 16th. Yeah, we've had over a month to do this evaluation, so we have time to consider it here. And if there are any issues that arose, to give us a chance to talk about that. I mean, the Morris um, Canal one he said he wasn't aware of. I, I, to, I talked to him a week ago and said, asked him what the status was and all of it. And, um, he said he wasn't aware of the Morris Canal, so I sent him the materials on that stuff. But, um, but I know we requested it at the council right. meeting in the caucus, so I'm not sure where. There are breakdowns there in terms of, of relaying that those instructions, but I mean I, I don't know what the timing is for folks. I'm sure everybody wants to see their sure. stuff no, happen, but it's uh, um, for me it's I mean I'm not I'm not stubborn about it. So if folks want to move forward and move forward, but I will likely well, vote, vote against or or abstain. Let's talk to Mike yeah. today and see what his timeline is, um, and then go from there. Okay. I don't think you can have the Morris Canal. It's just, uh, and I haven't even looked at the Venus Jones one. And, and to be honest, I, well, I, I briefly looked at it while we were sitting here. Right. And he, he analyzed the, uh, the the community benefits, and and then the the upzoning for one year, kind of looking at that and kind of looking at the nets around that. So you know, the, the potentially increased revenue from upzoning and whatnot. I think valued at like 2.5, and then the, right. the community benefit was 200, 2 million. So essentially, real realizing like a $500,000 benefit for the for the developer. Um, I mean, I'm not a fiscal expert on this, but that, that benefit for for the developer and whoever's getting the upzoning is not just a one-year benefit, right? It's a it's a lifetime benefit in that sense. And so, um, I'm not sure how you how you quantify that or like. Uh, that present value, future value, whatever those things are, but uh, there's some some way to quantify that and be able to determine what the how much benefit that developer and is getting for the upzoning, and uh, and whether we're getting similar kind of value for the benefit over the, over time. So. Okay, uh, we could talk some more as leading up to Wednesday, and if I, and I know yours is Morris Canal, Jermaine, so. I'm not, uh, okay, is there anything else left here, uh, anyone else? All right, let's go through from the top. Oh, wait, where's Mark? Mark, yeah, I don't know where we're going. All right, why don't we go from the top, and then when Mark gets in here, we'll just, uh, we'll go right into it. Um, you want to take us from the top, Robert? I will, sir. 3A is an ordinance rescinding an ordinance we did commemorating Brunswick Street from Monmouth from Brunswick Street as Nicholas R. Curie Way. And those that he left behind thought it important to include his rank. So that's why we're putting in private and shortening, shortening the name Nicholas. Okay, any questions right. on that? Hearing none, next item. 3B, an ordinance authorizing the city to amend the lease agreement from Harwood Corporation for the use of additional 15 parking spaces located at 808 Pavonia Avenue. Okay, no questions. Next item. We did C, D, E, F, G, H, I is an ordinance of the council adopting amendments to Chapter 5. Filming and photography permits and chapter 160 fees and charges. Any questions on uh, 3i, folks? This is the film. None? Okay, we're going to skip 3j, I think, until the market's here. Yeah, no, yeah. 3k is authorizing the acceptance of a gift of an easement for access purposes in connection with the preliminary and final subdivision, final major subdivision of lands designated as Block 
21901 lots 5 through 10 and blocks and block 24601 lots 1 through 12 on the application of Bayfront Redevelopment LLC. Questions on this one? 3K? Is that all, I guess, routine? The $5 million in insurance and a million dollars for workers' comp? I mean, it's just a concern that it probably like leaves out the, the, the small developers I mean, to have the $5 million. And I think it's on page 8. Okay. I don't know if that's standard or not. Put the five million, five million, and the one million for the workers' comp. We met this at page eight. Page eight, yeah. I mean, I, I know that you know we have trouble sometime in it, and you know, with the smaller developer being able to cover insurance. But right now, this is a, a lot. I don't know if that means we're going to leave the guys out, or you know, are these guys going to be able to hire subcontractors with less liability insurance. Um, so the question is to the one department, I guess. Such insurance to be written with limits of not less than five million. So I guess this is three K five one, five two, five three. Workers comp a million dollars, no less than a million dollars. Bob Zero. That's a standard clause that usually comes out of the risk manager to the law firm. The law firm and how it took and it's correct. Yeah, we'll put it over here. Who is Bayfront Redevelopment LLC? It's Honeywell. It's Honeywell, oh, right? Okay. Yeah, I don't think this is a heavy lift for them, is it? This is a requirement on them, right? Correct. Is yeah. It, yeah. yeah. This is a requirement on Honeywell. Yeah. We, we, These insurance yeah, requirements. In conjunction with the risk manager of Jersey City in assessing right. the potential risk. Right. Yeah. In order for us to do the easement, to get the city to the open space, to sort of Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay, let's go back to 3J. This is an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 53 of the Jersey City Municipal Code. Um, amends the director's salaries uh, to increase their salaries to 150000 each, plus the council aids. He adds that. Okay, um, so uh, I first want to say um, I, I realize the reality that I'm here as a director uh, discussing uh, a, a, an ordinance that sort of inherently affects me. So uh, it, is, it is my intention to sort of be um, as objective as possible in terms of the analysis that the administration has done with regard to the decision to um, want to introduce this piece of legislation. Um, we sort of tried our best to review um, comparators in the market, um, other cities in New Jersey, um, and what they pay. Um, and we've also tried to hear the, the, the concerns from council people as well with regard to um, the AIDS salaries um, and sort of uh, where that number is right now, um, which is, you know, as is, as is noted in the draft ordinance, you know, below even the minimum wage in the state of New Jersey for a 40-hour work week. So, um, that's sort of, I just want to kind of put that 
flat out on the record to, to start. Um, I do want to talk a little bit about sort of our, our process insofar as it wants to be heard. Um, so what we try to do is obviously, you know, we're looking at ourselves as, you know, obviously one of the largest cities in the state of New Jersey, the, the, the second largest city, and we try to look at other cities in the state. Um, so East Orange, Patterson, Newark, Bayonne, and Elizabeth. Now, even considering the fact that most of those cities are substantially smaller than us, um, East Orange is 76% smaller than us, Bayonne is 75% smaller than us, Elizabeth is 52% smaller than us, Patterson is 45% smaller than us. But even when you look at the fact that they are so much smaller than us, when you actually look at the salaries they pay their directors, it's actually sometimes greater than what we pay our directors in this city um, as the second largest city in the country. Uh, excuse me, in the state, excuse me. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I just, I just wanted to say that we try to be very, very fact specific in doing that analysis and wanting to be competitive. Um, a lot of what we've been talking about that I've talked about in budget hearings with the council um, that I've done previously is the mission of the HR department, which is ultimately sort of focused on trying to create a competent, engaged, and accountable workforce for the city. And a lot of that sort of starts with leadership, right? And that leadership should be held um, accountable, and that the intention here is to sort of start pushing forward greater accountability measures um, and to start with the leadership in the city, um, but also to understand that we have to be competitive, right? And that we have to be able to look at the market that exists and sort of assess, you know, is the city of Jersey City being competitive, being the second largest city in the state? Are we being competitive with what we pay our directors, um, who are, of course, taking on a lot of responsibility for carrying out a lot of the initiatives that the council and, and the mayor uh, want to see push forward? Um, so we really believe, uh, based on that analysis and looking at the numbers in other cities, that this increase is warranted. Um, when you really look at our closest comparator, which is Newark, um, you know, Obviously, other cities are, it's good to have the data to look at, but Newark is really the only city that compares to us in terms of size. Um, and when you look at what Newark pays its directors, we are substantially lower um, than what their directors are paid. How much lower? Well, it depends on the position that you're looking at, of course, but um, case in point, uh, the business administrator in Newark makes $178,000 a year. Um, our business administrator makes $139,000. Council members in Newark, it, de it depends exactly on where they are. The council president, based on the last data that we got, um, I think right now, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that's, that's, a fair, that's a fair point to raise, right? <laughs> it's a fair point to raise. Um, um, <laughs> I think 90,000 about is, is about right. Um, based on the data that we're able to pull together. Um, in, in addition, of course, you know, the council aides in Newark make anywhere from fifty-three dollars to $64,000 a year. Um, our council aides, as many of you I'm sure know quite well, make $15,000 a year, which I'm sure you and they would argue is uh, grossly, grossly underpaying them for all the work that they do. And I know many of you have raised this issue to Brian, yeah, <laughs> and myself. Um, I think, uh, for whatever reason, they're an exception to the law. I'm not really sure why that is. Um, but I think, obviously, you all know the demands on them have changed substantially since maybe that law was first drafted. And um, we do think uh, it, it's, only, it's only fair for us to try to look at that number and, and consider moving it to a number that's a, a fair, a much fairer wage in light of all the work that they do. Um, is that there? We have uh, a fair meaning, what, 45? The, the ordinance says 32. Mm -hmm. oh, Which would be the city, that's like the city minimum wage of $15 an hour, $40 a week. So I just want to add a couple of more things. So this is a, a part of a, a broader initiative that the administration is taking to uh, balance and reset salaries uh, across all positions to make sure they're fair and competitive with positions. And also, not just with other cities, but internally that they're fair compared to other positions in the city. Uh, we also, it, it's a part of an initiative to uh, uh, create a more structured salary and raise system tied to performance management uh, and annual reviews and that sort of thing. 
so this is not an arbitrary number. We're hoping to normalize and standardize things as any typical business or corporation would of, of this size. And, and not even just that, but I mean to to support Brian's point, you know, there there are many cities that you know do have salary structures and compensation structures that are kept you know, up to date and accurate and have performance management that is a part of assessing employees and what they do. And I know that's also something else that, you know, several council people have brought up as well. You know, the wanting to improve the performance management system for city employees so that we can more accurately reward those who are, you know, truly contributing to the workforce and to the work of the city um, and properly manage those who are not. Fixed salaries, right? Because you mentioned yourself, and I know you're not mentioned in the fixed salaries. So it's all department directors, but we're specifically listing these out because these are. Yes, yeah, so I actually noticed that myself. I think I have to, we probably have to figure that out because I know that the Department of Finance is not a department anymore, and it's actually should be, I think that should be actually oh. HR, unless I'm on the maybe a I think we removed later that. version. Okay. Okay, so maybe that, that was already corrected. But yeah, the, the, HR is a department whose salary director needs to be set by ordinance as well. So that would be one of the people who is set by ordinance. Oh, then. Sorry. Oh, yeah. That's fine. That's, then I can speak freely and objectively then. <laughs> is it only these positions or is it? Correct. So, so by, by law, I mean, under the Faulkner Act, and, you know, Pete or Nick can jump in here, but um, director salaries are set by ordinance. Um, as for council people, as is the mayor. Um, I believe a tax collector as well. Um, so those are all the salaries that are set by ordinance. Anyway, yes. The list we have is not comprehensive, and I'm trying to understand if certain positions were intentionally not put in, or if the aim is to raise everyone's and it was just a clerical it's, it's every department director along with the well, the business administrator is the director of the department of administration. So it should be every department director. Okay, so HR is not listed. Should be? It should be. It should be. Okay. Public safety is not listed, but... That's not getting increased because the public safety director makes okay. substantially more tax than that. Tax wasn't listed, is that intentional? Tax collector is not a department. department. Yes, correct. So, so HR is the only one that's missing And, right, I think the Department of Finance should not be there, and it should be the Department of Human Resources. Got it. Yeah. And then tax and city clerk are also considered department heads? No, the t city clerk is a department head. Okay. The tax collector is not. The assessor is considered department head, correct? Okay, yes, okay. correct. So, um, sorry, I don't know. Okay, I mean, to use a, you know, so uh, the mayor was on Twitter uh, a month ago, a couple weeks ago, criticizing the freeholders for increasing their own pay. And obviously, it's a little different because they're voting on their own salary, but he said, very explicitly, you signed up for the job of the salary. Mm -hmm. And if the argument you guys are making is that these salaries aren't attracting market talent, I feel like the people who have all signed up for these jobs within the last year kind of belies that argument, right? That you two both have taken your jobs within the last year. Mm -hmm. The director of HECD just stood here and wants that job. Mm -hmm. uh, Public Works is a year or two old. Mm -hmm. um, Corporation Council is new. Um, if I go through this list, I mean, obviously the clerk and the assessor are tenured positions, which is a little different. Um, the only person who's been here, I think, for longer than three or four years is how Health and Human Services. Um, so I, I guess, can you guys sort of respond to that argument if, that if we're not attracting market talent, why are all these talented people signing up? Yeah, so I think uh, a part of it, there's, there's two parts to how you want to get, you know, good people into an organization, right? I mean, one is to attract them, the second is to retain them, right? And so I think ultimately in any organization, there are people who sign up for the job, um, and there are people who maybe choose to stay long term, and there are people who, for any number of reasons, look at the job a year or two in and maybe choose not to stay, right? And so I think a lot of organizations, public and private, have to grapple with how do you get people to stay, not just come, but to stay. And so I think that's a part of the concern is making sure that we can keep and retain you know, good people. But I think the, the second thing in my mind is we want to be able to sort of justify, like in, in light of the responsibility that the directors have, looking at cities of you know, comparable size, of which there's really truly only one, but um, looking at what even cities who are 75% smaller than Jersey City pay those directors, 
um, in light of, I think, what is, what is asked in general and the responsibility that's placed on them, that we want to make sure that we're recognizing that, and not just the directors, of course, the council aides as well. I mean, this is, they're a part of this whole process too, but we want to recognize that. So, see, see, I listen to, to what you say, mm -hmm. but I agree with you the councilman James Solomon. Mm -hmm. So, like a corporate council, he took his job last year with no how much he's going to get it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So now, so a few months later, bumped to hundred fifty thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and when they made it as a tweet, they say some managers over tenure didn't have an increased paycheck. I got no problem with the corporation council. It's not the personal. Okay, I just pick it up, you know. And uh, also, when they anybody some person like a business to us, we do, he make hundred thirty nine thousand dollars, and when he took the job the last year, I mean this year, he knows how much he's gonna make and. Be willing and glad to take the job. So this all those change when they business officer decide to leave the job, and then new directors come in. Then we pay one hundred fifty thousand dollars. It makes sense. But I mean, as you, I know, a lot of managers in the city of Jersey, five ten years they didn't get any increase. You know, what I'm even though they were probably by Tom <coughs> City Club, Robert is the only one deserve. Most people is brand new. I haven't got a raise since 2005. See here? And I take home less money than I did in 2005. See here then? You hear that? So if it goes of the by... Because the tax. Yes. Because, because... I'm not clear. Because when the business address of Brian Play take the job, he knows what his paycheck. You know? So if you increase this one, as we say that if you... 13 years. Yeah, you direct us to move in, then we follow the, this kind of amount. It makes sense because the way you're going to track to better than Brian Platt, maybe $150,000 can bring up to better than um, Brian Platt. So, to me, if you just increase a person who just started work, three, six months, increase like a fifteen twenty thousand dollars $20,000, let me tell you, insert the taxpayer of Georgia City. Well, this is what I was saying. I, I assume. This one beginning has mm -hmm. two directors. Sense. So Brian Play, as a producer, he quit the job now, mm -hmm. and he job taken back again, mm -hmm. until later. <laughs> then makes sense. But other than that, yeah. I agree with the numbers, $150,000, but yeah. start $150,000 based on new hire, mm -hmm. except so, the robot. So this, except for Rob, that's, I understand that. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. It's a, you know, I'm so, 13 years. So, to him, mm -hmm. increase like a fifteen thousand dollars. Mm -hmm. Thirteen years without increase is okay. You know, it's deserved salary. But guy who just hired mm -hmm. knows what his salary, mm -hmm. and the six months later, bumped to twenty thousand dollars above the what he actually his paycheck. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Those kind of amount. They, we should be apply for new hire. Mm -hmm. Show us some respect tax because why? Mm -hmm. As I said, before we pass a 2018 budget, already mayor raised half a million dollars, a lot of different department employees already. Mm -hmm. Now, and not only that, as I <coughs> say that, that the police department, a lot of guys uh, congratulate them, they promote as a deputy chief, lieutenant, Sergeant and Captain, yep. those increase, we don't even know where the money's come from yet. Because we only put in 2018 $1.2 million as a salary adjustment. <laughs> only place when I see that the number, these of the two people, one city club and the council aid. And the other price, they should be applied for the new hire. It makes sense. So. So, so, two, so, two things so we just put you another okay. paragraph simply. This all increase apply for the new hire. That's all. Okay, so I want to say two things. There is. He's a leaving uh, because okay. he's going to go. Here. Yeah. 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 Right. So I mean, I, I, just, I just want to say like two two things in response to that. So first is I mean, Robert pointed out 2005. So 2005 was the last year that the director salaries were changed or updated, right? So the director's salaries overall have not been updated since that time. Now there have been sort of 
let's say, cost of living or sort of some increases that have been made to that extent. But per the city books, 2005 was the last time the city updated the salaries for the directors, number one. Number two, my second thing is you say if a director took the position at this salary, they should know that that's what they're getting paid and that's it. And I think that's fair. No, no, no. Right. So that, I guess that's my point is that I think you would argue that an aide who took the salary, who took the job at that salary, should not expect anything more. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, no, no, no. I, 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 no, 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 no. But but no 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 but I'm but 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 I'm just I'm making the point but I'm making I'm just making, okay okay I'm just I'm making the point I'm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somebody who's making less than minimum wage they should not be linked in the way around this ordinance and it should not be a point of comparison I'm just I'm just making the point I'm just making the point yes. Mm -hmm. When he was just a minute, appointed the director, at the time he increased already. Take a look. At the time yes. when? Yes, when they hired, the, when he, after he left the 2013, yep. when you put your director at the time, I remember that we adjusted director's paycheck already at the time. Yes, so the department of public safety. Right, exactly. It was public safety. The public safety director salary went up. 190, yeah, right, exactly, substantially. But the other directors were not changed. But not only that, yeah. some directors received it. Married payment, so and so, they did that. So now, you gotta be fair, because what I complain about here, the people, people, they're working there many years, they didn't get the increase of five, six, seven years, and the one business administrator, I mean, the, the deputy officer, even say that he didn't get increase almost 10 years. Fair is a fair. So now, this one, if we apply for new hire, the director, then I support 100%, but not as the existing, I mean, the current director, you know what I'm saying? Except Robert, he deserved it 13 years to increase, and also counseling. I'm going to stay with the department directors. I'm one for all, all for one and one for all. No, that's for your opinion. I and have a Just a minute, Robert. Oh, Decision, okay. we're going to decide at the how we're going to do it, not him. I have a question. And, um, the cities that's so much smaller than us, right? Uh, they have their directors. Yeah. They make more than us. Do they have as many division directors? Because right now we have people in, in supervising. No one has a supervisor. They make a supervisor pay. I mean, I think we have a lot of division directors and not department heads mm -hmm. here in Jersey City. And I'm not sure. I mean, maybe you can speak on that. Maybe this, you know, would East Orange have a DPW director and then a vice chair and an assistant and assistant and a supervisor? Do they have the same amount of people working well, there? Well, I mean, I'm not yet. I unfortunately cannot speak too intimately about, I guess, how they're set up. I mean, Newark certainly has a larger employee workforce than we do, but I don't know. So your question is, how many divisions do each of the departments have? Like, or is it a comparable yeah. level of? Maybe we have a, a DPW director, and uh -huh. then we have just the regular staff. Right. But we, do we have seven different, you know, uh, NID? Right. Automotive, automotive parks, and forestry. Yeah. And, you know, we have directors of every. We have about fifteen directors. How many directors in DPW? Division directors. No, like division directors. I think there's like maybe four or five. Four or five, yes. we have, um, I know. So this is what it is. Some town, some town, director make more money than maybe Georgia City, mm -hmm. but his role is much wider in the bowl right. than that's Georgia what I'm, that's City. What I'm asking. That's what he want to say, and I agree with him. Because a Georgia City director, maybe we make a less than the New York so and so, but I mean the Elizabeth, whatever town, but what role. Because it's spread out with a lot of different division directors. Mm -hmm. The other part, one director can be handled like a three division, the more than what our directors handle. Mm -hmm. So don't, you cannot compare just one to one. You gotta look into matters. So if we try to bring up the fair, some, some management group, division director didn't get increase mm -hmm. a lot. So Robert mentions that oh, you should be increased. Oh, well, not. 
then we should be include all the division directors also. But I'm going to tell you, Robert, how are we going to do that? He should be not make a decision. We make a decision. So I don't care what he said. All right? So if we apply for the new hire, I'm pretty sure city council members will feel comfortable, I guess. I'm pretty sure myself. But if we do that, person who knows that how much he's going to make six months ago, bump to another fifty, seventeen thousand dollars $17,000, it's not fair to other, same department, but different division director, it's unfair to them. Okay. All right? Anyone have anything new to add? To this? Sure. Yeah. Different you guys points. I just want to make sure these are two points. So the one is, I mean, I understand the argument on market, like competition, and, and that's fair. I think the argument, if you're saying the issue is retention, then it means you would want to link any increases to time served, right? So instead of just giving a blanket increase today, you would say, look, if you've been in the position for two years or three years, then there's a bump up. I don't know if you can build that into the ordinance or you have to do it one by one. That to me makes more sense because then you're saying you took the salary knowing what it was, you've been here for a couple of years, you're more experienced, you're more marketable, we're gonna bump up your salary and keep you. That's something I'm certainly amenable to. The, the second piece is, I, I get you know even just a general increase, but I think my concern is, is and there's a little bit of talking about with the MUA and a different topic, mm -hmm. but we take these one by one by one and we just sort of add the spending up in a row. And you know, Michael's brought up the point, we had somewhere in the order of a quarter to half a million dollars of merit raises that we just built into our budget. And now we're talking about another $200,000 of director increases. But what is this effect? Yeah. Sorry? When is this effective? I mean, assume it'd be effective as of whatever 60 days or 20 days after we pass an ordinance. I've changed that. It's not, it's not budget. We can start January 1st. We can to you guys. So, that's what we're discussing. No, so, so we make a solution. Why don't we make it life easier? Simple. Have to be fair. So we pay $15,000, we got no problem. But I, as a maybe new hire study, you know what I'm saying? So when they decide to, uh, uh, Brian, I'm sorry. Council, would you be amenable to uh, Sorry. Solomon's uh, requ uh, request to do it based on a time of experience? Sorry. Yeah. Still, whatever you do there is still better than what I have now. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, I just think the two like, as we just think about the numbers, right? It's like, okay, well, I think you said they're making harder choices, right? If this is director increases as the priority, then it means that maybe we shouldn't have $40 million or half a million dollars in merit raises, right? Like, we just, I, I just feel like we're spending money as a city without realizing, like, it'd be one thing if we were, everything was chill, but like, we've got these huge tax increases potentially. I mean, that, that's my concern with just sort of taking so, these one by one out of context. So, why don't you do change up? Okay. So, they have to, whatever we do, except Bob, Council Aid, they have to raise, because Council Aid, the 20 years, they immediately, whatever we pass that, other things one, as you say, maybe January 1st, or, uh, uh, the new hires, whatever it is, uh, you guys have discussed. I, I think to that end, that for so January 1st, is if you're looking at it as it pertains to budget, that makes much more sense because if we weren't necessarily yeah. budgeting. Yeah, that's the exception. Council salaries budgeted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's because of, that's because of council A salary. salary already in the budget. Okay? Yeah. And the also, guy who worked at 13 years didn't raise at 13 years, he deserved to get raised. Because of why? No question about it. 13 years. The living cost are higher, contribution, at the, at the other things get higher. So he is a deserve, council A is a deserve, rest of them, I'm not going to say not deserve, but it's not the right time to increase. Other than that, if you, you amend a little bit, I got no problem to do it. I'm both with yes. How long has Health and Human Services been the same director? Stacy, uh, since about August. To our September of 2013? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's about five years. So th that's that's an argument for. Uh, yeah. You know, if she's been there, I didn't realize she was there for five years. Yeah. But you had a four and a half year term, and it's. A yeah. So, so she was a director in thirteen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think it was September of twenty thirteen or so, somewhere in there. Yes. So we'll make we'll make. We know what's what's that? What what we gonna do that? So no. So what's what's on the table is. We'll propose a, uh, a factor for the time of service, time served, um, as a phase in, and also the start date of January 1st. With a base of what? But you said, how much does the county Books. clerk, I mean, the city clerk make in East Orange? In, in North Orange, it's from the data that we got. 
249 is this, but at least Orange is 75% smaller than Jersey City though, so. And Nork is what? And Yeah, I'm not, I actually, we were not able to get the number for Nork, okay. for the clerk. Brian, we're going to make sure that council aid increase immediately after you go on. Because oh. we print the budget for 2018. Yeah. There will be no reason to hold till next year to January, okay? Then end up, you understand? Sure. Okay. So we'll, we'll make these changes and have it hopefully by tomorrow for you guys to review and then. Yes. Okay. And the problem I understand. Let's just have increased. Let me just reach out. What are the changes? Okay. So I have an effective date of January 1, 2019 with regards to the directors. Um, I have that we're going to try to tweak this to incorporate um, something with relation to time of service. Um, the council aid salaries. What's that? What's the fixed salary for those directors? Does it remain the old number and then tweaking it with time of service, or is it 150 with 50 time of service? So perhaps it's if you serve a certain amount of time, you get the 150. If you have it, I don't know. Okay. okay. Well, you guys propose well, yeah, we'll, we'll see what yeah, we figure it out. I, I, can we do this separately? I think it's council. Solomon said um, the. Why would the council A be bunched in with we, this? We just, these are the only two uh, salaries set by ordinance. We just put them in the same ordinance and nothing for no reason. We put the deposit already. Because right. yeah, I'm just saying, in every, I, I believe, you know, if we're going to vote for this, right, 3J, then someone may want to vote yes for the council A and no to something else. So I don't think it would be a, I don't understand why it's on the same ordinance. No, if he's going to be doing that, just be clear of that, you know, that when you say, like, well, we still have a of the council people that class, no one started as of September 1st. And the rest of us started from the January 1st based on that the, whatever is the budget. You know, so, so what do you suggest, Jermaine? Separate them? I mean, I would say separate them because the council aid, I think, would probably be unanimous because I'm going to tell you, I don't have an aid right now because of the 15000 I'm sorry. You know, because it's, I mean, you can have someone, but every aide that I interviewed wanted more than 15000 to be with you, you know. And the only person that kind of really wanted it worked full time. That really can help me out in the community to make sure that we're going in the right direction. She works full time. She can't answer a phone or an email until after 4.30. Yeah. Yeah. But the other hand, guy who worked to serve the city's... Uh, 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 that without increase of 13 years, he deserved the right of way to increase. Even though we have a lot of things to disagree with the city clocks, but when you take action, they should be considered. But the rest of the people did get the Good luck. So, so what I will say is, and, and this is just me talking, like I'm not a, a post, right? To, because we are a, a bigger city than everyone else right even though if we if we really look at it we probably you know we we are the money engine of the state and i think that the people should be paid competitively because you know we just had three directors leave and i'm sure money might have had something to do with it, right maybe family or you know something else no, but no. I, i'm sure we just had a few people leave and money might have been part of the you know the underlying issue Right. That's, just, that's just me talking. Like we did have a few people leave in the last week, two weeks, right? That and then money might have been an underlying issue because I'm t if, and and I understand. Listen, if someone calls and say, "Hey, we need a corporation council in Ridgefield," hey, Pete, two hundred thousand. I, I don't blame him if he leaves. I don't think anyone sitting in this room. <laughs> would, you know, I don't think anyone in this room would you know blame anyone for leaving to you know better their livelihood. You know, and, and as council people, we know what we signed up for, but we do a, 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 a tough job. You know, we we in the trenches every single day in the, in the streets. And I mean, I think we all can, you know, relate to it that we're sitting here and everyone is on the list except us. You know, we don't see ours, but we're in the trenches. And, and, and I know, I, I know some of us do, some of us do, huh? Some of us do more than 40 hours a week. Some of us do 60, 70, 80 hours a week. You know, I, I can vouch that when I walk in uh, a lot of times that, you know, you have people here that, you know, with their house clothes on. 
Come on, 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 come The mayor of Jersey City was the 413th highest paid employee in the city. That is just silly. I mean, the mayor is not only as well. I think, you know, if, if you're looking at it, and I'm sure that the mayor don't want to increase his own salary, but if you're looking at it, the, I mean, we're the, I'm going to say we're the number one city in the state. And, and the mayor is not compatible. I mean, you got the records mean, over there. Even though we are not number one city of state of New Jersey, it doesn't mean we have to number one city pay the city employee. So I just want to make sure what the council uh, sure. and the Robert just said. But people also need to be paid what they're deserving. I think that right. that's, yeah. people, that's really be. important. And whether or not we do it right now or phase it in next year, I still think that ultimately that's really important. Right. Okay. You don't want people to just keep leaving and yeah. the turnover, they keep going and keep going. Mark, I just have one more question for you. Um, in terms of the new New Jersey Pay Equity Act, um, has that factored in consideration in terms of this ordinance, in terms of the pay scales of the directors or anybody else, in terms of any plans for the future? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that in light of the pay equity law that New Jersey passed, um, you know, we are looking, you know, very carefully at compensation for employees. And it's not just about the directors, it's really across the city. Um, and you know that's sort of more of an internal thing. It's not like you know that law requires us to look at other cities, but I think it does allow us and requires us to look at you know, how we're compensating people for the work that they do, right? And making sure that across gender and across race and across any other number of factors under the law against discrimination that we're compensating people fairly for the work that they're doing. So I think a, a part of the consideration here is also to look at the work that people are doing, um, especially in relation to the division directors and level responsibility, and to try to come up with salaries that are, that are fair, you know, ultimately. Okay, okay. so we're gonna see this supplement. We'll see something. I'm not yes. sure what it is, but <laughs> <laughs> we'll see something. Um, I'm ready to. I'm ready to wrap up. That's what I'm ready to do. What's, huh? One chip step, and the regular council make it eighty-three thousand dollars plus a full full-time aid. God, we're not looking for that many. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, not Says you. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on. Let's let's keep moving. Keep us okay, going. So Mark has one more thing. Which one? Uh, Z46. Yeah, Z46. Z46 for Mark. For Employee Assistance Program. Z46 is authorizing the award of pro professional services contract to new pathway counseling services to provide counseling services in connection with the Employee Assistance Program. Any questions about Z46? We do this every year. Yep. yep. Hearing none, we are moving from back to the top of resolutions, right? Nothing on second readings. We went through everything, I think, that had questions. All first readings were discussed. Yep. There will be a public hearing on the 2018-2019 McGinley Square Special Improvement District Budget and Assessment Roll. I will be in... South Jersey taking a class, so Sean will be pinch hitting. <laughs> 10 top resolution. Yeah, I'm trying to find the page, Councilman. There's only about 12 pages of resolution. Uh, 10A is a resolution authorizing the insertion of special items of revenue. And appropriations, those are the grants received since the adoption of the budget. B, C, and D, excuse me, B and C, cancel and refund tax sales certificates sold in error. D is authorizing refunds due to overpayments on property tax account. E is amending resolution 18657, authorizing the tax, tax collector to transfer 
2012 and prior year premiums paid on tax liens purchased at tax sale from the tax collector to the city's miscellaneous revenue not anticipated or also known as MERNA account. Questions on that, Council? F and G deal with what I alluded to earlier, the adoption of the budget and the assessment role of the McGinley Square Special Improvement District. We did H through K, we did L. M, Through R, authorize the business administrator to execute discharges of mortgages at 88 Dwight Street, 627 Garfield Avenue, 85 Neptune, Ave Neptune Avenue, 22 Roosevelt Avenue, 312, 314 Van Horn Street, 101 Virginia Avenue. S, authorizes the execution of a mortgage subordination agreement affecting the property known as 105 Old Bergen Road. T is approving the sale of 301 Martin Luther King Drive by 301 MLK Drive LLC to 301 House LLC and authorizing 301 House LLC to assume the city's mortgages and to subordinate the city's mortgages to a first new first mortgage against the property. U and V done earlier, W through Z2 done earlier. Z3 is a resolution authorizing the execution of an intergovernmental agreement with Hudson County in connection with a grant application for the Hudson County Jersey City Transitional Grant Area's fiscal year 2018 funding to fund various programs servicing AIDS patients. Z4, authorizing awarding of a contract to Park Mobile. We spoke about that earlier. Z5 through 13, the whole page was taken care of. C14 to 18 were discussed. 19, professional services agreement with the law firm of Murphy Orlando LLC to represent the city, Jersey City Police Department, and Edgar Sir, Martinez a, in the matter of John Beto and George Manuel versus the city of Jersey City. Just two quick questions. One, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is a new case, right? We haven't discussed right. this. Okay. Um, and then one, just reading it, it said it was filed in Monmouth County. Do you guys know why that would be? It might have been a. Uh, it might have been related to residents of one of okay. the parties. Okay. Is, is this? I mean, is this, because it's a new case and whatever is so that we should be discussing at some point in closed caucus, so we know what we're, you know, voting on, or I don't. I just don't know. Well, I can tell you that the reason we decided to say this to outside counsel yeah. was it was a, discrimin a discrimination lawsuit. There's a possibility that the one of the named defendants may receive disciplinary action. So anytime that happens, we can't have one section of the law department prosecuting the disciplinary action and one section of the law department representing that individual. Okay. So I'll tell you, so it was a discrimination lawsuit, and that's why we're referring it to outside counsel. Okay. If you want any more information, I'll be happy to schedule a special meeting to do that. But if that's, or if that's sufficient, that, uh, it's up to you, counsel. I think it's probably sufficient. All okay. right. Z20, ratifying the award of a professional services agreement with the law office of Adams Gutierrez and Lada Boutier, LLC to act as third party hearing officers for City of Jersey City in various disciplinary actions. Z21 is a resolution ratifying the award of a professional services agreement with the law firm of Adams, Gutierrez, and Lata Boutier for le general legal services related to em employment organizational practices. C-22 is a resolution ratifying and authorizing a professional services agreement with the law firm of Whipple, Azarello, LLC, to represent Mayor Stephen Fulop in the matter of One Journal Square Urban Renewal Company, LLC, et al., v. the City of Jersey City, et al. Z-23 is a resolution ratifying the award of a professional services agreement with the law firm of Light, De Palma, Greenberg LLC to represent City of Jersey City in the matter of One Journal Square Partners, Urban Renewal Company LLC et al. versus the City of Jersey City et al. So what is it from the case of 2020-23? Because uh, to me it looks like the same case, but we hired two different law firms. Can you explain to me? Because one part of our one firm was the mayor and the other firm was represent the city. 
So because there are two defendants, both were entitled to counsel based upon their mayor, as the mayor of Jersey City and the city itself, oh, we have an obligation to provide separate counsel in the event the defenses don't mix. And there are specific counts in the suit that pertain only to the city, specific counts that pertain only to the mayor. Correct. I define the award of a professional services agreement with the law firm of Light De Palma Greenberg to represent the City of Jersey City, Jersey City Police Department, James Shea and Philip Zaki in the matter of Miguel A. Feliz Rodriguez v. the City of Jersey City et al. Z25. Oh, hold on one second. Yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah. Um, this is the uh, the Tolly uh, Avenue. May, I can talk to you guys a little bit offline. It may make sense at some point for us to meet in close caucus yeah, about this true. case. Yeah. Sure. But we can do that. Yeah. Not like a rush on it, but like, I think yeah. Yeah, we're it's, it's, it's an important, I think, at yeah. least publicly, there's a lot of sure. publicity you, around it. Are you okay with the contract? Yes, I'm okay, okay with the contract. C25, a resolution amending a professional services agreement with the law firm of O'Donnell, McCord, PC, to serve as special counsel to represent the city of Jersey City in tax appeals. To pay final bill. So well, this, this, one, yeah. this, one. this company we pay six hundred twenty six hundred twenty five thousand dollars. This is a one taxable case or no, multiple? This is numerous. Numerous. Yes, yes. over a period of time. And the six hundred six hundred thousand dollars goes back to the initial retention in two thousand thirteen. Yes. So this is a numerous case. Oh, yes. it's new. When I say every tax appeal, our tax appeal council handles numerous cases. Okay, so they right. It's yeah. I mean, each, each case, each one probably handles. I'd say I'd say probably well more than thirty, at least probably more. At least at least thirty per uh, per council at any at any given time. Probably a lot more. I can give you I can get you those exact numbers, but it's yeah. certainly not one, two, or ten. Six hundred twenty-five thousand dollars, almost a period of three years. I start to pitch my head. You know. So can you okay? The volume of work is significant. I need mean, exactly the number of cases that this firm handled. But I will tell you, over a period of from 2013 till the now, it is a significant number. Okay. So with this, I, when this was on the agenda either last one or the other one, I kind of was trying to just understand this excess bill. Can you guys help me kind of understand that? Um, I think from when it was raised at the last meeting, we went back and looked, and we uh, we went through the bills, and the bills were consistent with the work that was performed. Um, I think, si simply put, the matters were assigned. It would have cost more to reassign the matters to new council because the work had already begun uh, by the firm. And uh, yes, the work the work provided was you know we're, we're reviewing the bills. We're confident that the work was performed. And as it says, this is a final bill. Yeah, this firm is no longer the tax bill attorney of the city. Right. So um, I appreciate it. A couple of questions. So the, I, guess the, I guess the question I have is this, this 40K. If I, you know, if I add up the kind of each of the authorizations that happened, is it, so it adds up to 625. But then is this 40K above that? That's what I'm trying to understand. So, like the first one is 75, then 100, then 200, then 100, then 150, and that adds up to 625. The, the 40 is over and above 100 of the, la of the last iteration. Okay. Uh, I'm not, but I'm not sure exactly whether it combined what it comes out to, whether the, the yeah. 625 is including that 40 or not. The professional services contract is only good for a year. Right. Yeah. So yeah. So I, I, so I don't know collectively if they actually build the full 625. I can certainly find that out for you. I think there's sort of two issues. One is this like a process issue, which I've said before you guys, but like if at any point you know, contracts need to be renewed right. and people are starting work to bring that to council so we know, even if it's the continuation of just like, hey, we're closing out our account. Um, and so hopefully just moving forward, because this isn't you guys, the <laughs> process issue. And, and also, right. the council, <laughs> I yeah. received the word of the council collectively right. on that loud and clear. This is not a practice that Peter and I are looking to continue, we're looking to change it. And uh, as you mentioned, this is something that happened in January, March, right. February, March of this year, predating our arrival. Right. And I personally, so there's a the process, and then there's the sort of specifics of these guys. You know, I have some concerns about this specific firm um, and, and kind of 
the work they were doing, how they were hired. Uh, so, you know, I'm probably going to vote against this just because I'm not sure that firm represents sort of what we should be working with in Jersey City. But, you know, that that's my sort of personal specific content to this. And, so, and to that point, that firm right. is not working, working with us anymore. Right? Okay. Z26 through Z29, we're done. As were 30 and 31. C32 is authorizing the establish establish establishing of a sister city relationship between the city of General Santos and the Republic of the Philippines. And this, this the is title is wrong. Here. Yes, this is supposed to be for Gamoa West District. Yeah. Uh, Excuse me. Yeah. This is supposed to be for Gamoa West District. We did Santos City last yes. last meeting. And tomorrow is the signing, by the way, everyone is invited. The two, two sister city signing ceremony at 2 o'clock here in City Hall. Yes. Now, this is a different. It's different. It's just the title. So it's actually for just the title for Santos. Yep, that was. General Santos. <laughs> and there was no MOA in okay. Oh, there is in the back of the yeah. Correction. Yeah. You get that to me tomorrow? Sure. Yeah. Thank you. C33 is congratulating Thomas Malahi, owner of Grapevine Tavern, on his 50th anniversary in business. Right up there by Maloney's Meat Market. Z34, resolution commending Deputy Chief Robert F. Gutch on the occasion of his retirement for 31 years of service to the city of Jersey City. Z35, commending Deputy Chief Edward J. Kist on the occasion of his retirement for 33 years of service to the city of Jersey City. Z36 is hard for me to read because I was the, his patrol boy that kept him safe from crossing the streets. Uh, a resolution commending Deputy Chief Timothy J. Lockwood on the occasion of his retirement for 31 years of service to the city of Jersey City. C-37 is a resolution commending Deputy Chief James Latella on the occasion of his retirement for 30 years of service for the City of Jersey City. C-38 commending Deputy Chief Thomas G. Cowan on the occasion of his retirement for 31 years of service to the City of Jersey City. Z-39, a resolution posthumously honoring Police Officer Ramon Luis Torres for his contributions and dedication to his family and to the city of Jersey City. Z40 is recognizing the month of September 2018 as Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Z41 is a resolution recognizing the seventh annual day of shame. Z42 we did earlier. Z43 is a resolution consenting to the undertaking of certain capital projects. I think we talked about that mm -hmm. with a little bit anyway was touched on. Z44, or approving the appointment of Anicia C. Alone. We did that. Z45, appointing Maureen Nally as a member of the Jersey City Municipal Utilities Authority. Uh, we did Z47, uh, we did 46, 47, 48, a license agreement with the city redevelopment agency allowing the city to enter into a property owner by the licensor to use space in the licensor's property at 25 Sip Avenue in connection with this Jersey City Art and Studio Tour on October 4 through 7, 48 and 4. Council President, this is 25 or 85? 25. 25? 25? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's not the 25. Oh, 85. When I do believe 25 is Sib Avenue, come up Summit Avenue, in the corner of a Summit and the Sib Avenue. Well, that's the one we're looking at. Yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah. 85. Well, like 64 room. That's got to be 25. Okay. All right, Z49, Z50, we're done. Z51, authorizing the establishment of a sister city between District 1 
of the municipality of Bucharest in the Republic of Romania and the city of Jersey City in the United States of America and the ex execution of a memorandum of agreement. Z52, we spoke about earlier. Z53. I have er those. You have them? Which ones? I'm sorry. Yep. Okay, maybe mine's out of order. Yeah, I, I have all of them. Z53 urging the Hudson County Board of Chosen Freeholders to immediately initiate the opt out clause to terminate Hudson County's contract with the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Brian? Anyone want to say anything about that? That's the Customs Enforcement, Brian? Uh, the ICE one? Okay. ICE. I mean, if anyone has questions, I'm happy to, me or Rolando and I work Yeah. Happy to talk about it. Any other questions? No? Okay. Z54 resolution creating the Bayfront Redevelopment Community Advisory Committee to guide the city in the development of the Bayfront project. So, what's happening to this one? This one is being withdrawn. In the Z55, we did. You all received J.A. Alexander, the Martin Luther King Drive Roadway and Traffic Signal Improvement Project. Tomorrow they're taking bids for street resurfacing. They're hoping to get it on Wednesday's meeting to, quote, strike while the iron is hot. Okay. Uh, to, we have a motion to adjourn. Yes, I can. At 4.35, the motion was made by Councilperson Ridley, second by Prinzeri. To adjourn, Councilperson Ridley, Prinzeri, Bajiano is absent, Yun, Solomon, Robinson, Rivera is absent, Waterman absent, Council President. We're off the record.